What is up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Goblin, and today I'm coming in with a classic video talking about how to help stop a bad trip. Hope you guys enjoy, drop a like if you do, and without further ado, let's get right into it. So, <clears throat> how to stop a bad trip. Now, I'm going to break this video up into two parts. Hold on, I have to cough. Excuse me. <coughs> Jesus Christ. But anyways, I'm going to break this up into two parts. I'm going to do a bit of it where I'm talking about if you have a trip sitter with you or just a friend with you in general who's, you know, either A, sober or B, not having a bad trip or B, if you're tripping alone and having a bad trip because they're two very different things. And I, I want to make it clear that this video is just my experience. This isn't like scientifically proven facts, but it's it's stuff you could try that maybe could help you out at some point if you're tweaking out and having a bad trip one day. So either way, let's dive into it. So the the first part is I'm, I'm going to do with the trip sitter. And, you know, the the way to kind of stop a bad trip if you have a trip sitter really falls more upon the trip sitter than you. But there are some things that the person having the bad trip can kind of do. You know, one of one of the things that I have found really helps is I remember I was with a friend and it was her first time tripping and she was freaking out. You know, she was talking about how she was seeing like some, you know, just some crazy shit, some scary stuff. And all she really wanted to do was talk, you know, talking took her mind off of it. And here's the thing. When you're tripping, your your mind is very, how do I put it? Very like you you almost have tunnel vision when you're tripping, you know, like you will focus in very, very hard on one thing or like a select certain group of things or thing that is happening. And you'll really, really zone in on that. And then your thoughts will just spiral based off of that, you know, but you'll really focus on, you know, one thing more than you normally would. Like multitasking, thinking about multiple things at once doesn't really happen very much when you're tripping, you know, you're really, really zoned in on one thing. And with her, she was really, really zoned in on what she was seeing. She was seeing some like scary stuff. You know, she was seeing like some, some like, she called it like a demon or some shit. I don't know, dude, it was fucked up. But either way, the way that, you know, me and my friends kind of dealt with that when we were there, because we were all tripping too, except for one of us, you know, he was just kind of chilling and smoking. He didn't want to trip was we just talk to her, you know, conversate with whoever's having a bad trip and just continue the conversation. It doesn't have to be a good conversation, but you have to remember that they're tripping. So they're not going to, not going to think like, oh, this conversation's boring. I don't want to talk anymore. You know, like you can ask very basic questions and say really basic things and still like get a very, you know, a very, very effective and like interesting conversation for that person. Cause you know, when, when they're tripping, if, if they're conversating with you, if they're talking or answering a question, they're going to be really focused on you and really focused on answering the question for the most part, instead of, you know, whatever is, you know, maybe the bad thing about their trip. You know, if you can get them to pay attention to you and, you know, ask them a lot of questions, be like, how's your day going? How's school going? How's work going? How's uh whatever going? What have you been up to? What are your plans today? What are your plans tomorrow? Shit like that. Just like general bullshit, small talk or whatever you want to talk about. Try to prolong the conversation as much as you can. Cause if they're talking to a friend, if they're talking to someone they like, you know, how, how your brain kind of works on acid when you're with people you like, you know, you're, you're much more comfortable, you know, you're, you're really, I almost want to say like vulnerable in your mind on acid, you know, you're almost like, you're almost very like nervous, like you're, you're very anxious and like nervous around people who you're not comfortable with. So if you have a trip sitter or a friend there who, you know, you've been friends with, you know them well, you know, just conversating with them will help you feel a lot better because you just feel comfortable, you know, you just feel better about it. And, you know, the, the, I, I always like to say like your mind on acid is so like innocent. So like very, very basic things can help you like feel better or make you feel worse. Like it's a very, very like thin ice you're on, very thin line. So, you know, I'll always conversate with them. I've heard, I, I mean, I don't know if this is a common thing, but I've heard like someone told me one time that if you're having a bad trip, you should smoke. Don't do that. That's bad advice. 
because for those of you guys who have done acid before, or maybe you have but haven't smoked on it and maybe you don't know, weed enhances your trip a lot. You know, weed enhances your trip a lot. It really does. You know, it really does. It it gets you out there. It gets you going. You know, it's it's not good for when you're having a bad trip. It's just going to intensify it. You know, if you're having a good trip, go for it. If you're having a bad trip, fuck no, don't do that shit. The, the next thing that you can do is when someone's having a bad trip, try to take them out of the, like, environment that they're in. You know, if, if they're like, for example, if let's say they're at a friend's house and they're having a really bad trip there, and, you know, maybe it's something about the environment, or, like, they're seeing something around them, take them to somewhere else, you know, take them to a different place, if they're comfortable with it, of course, if they're, like, tweaking out about it, then no, don't do this, but try to take them to a different, a different spot in the house, or, like, just a different place entirely, you know, like, if you're at one friend's house, maybe take them back to your house, you know, or take them to a friend's house, you know, because what I found is, when, when I'm tripping, and when I'm, like, having a a bad trip whenever I I kind of like relocate it's almost like starting fresh you know and I whenever like I you know go from my friend's house back home to my house it's almost like I don't even remember what I was thinking about when I was tripping at my friend's house you know I'm like I'm starting fresh almost because you're having very like I I don't know how to say it like very your 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 experience when you're tripping good or bad is based very very heavily around your environment you know it really is it's it's all about who you're with and where you're at. You know, it, it truly is. And that's a huge component of it. So if you if you just switch it up, you know, if you're having a bad trip at a friend's house, go to a different friend's house, you know, go to your house, you know, go somewhere that you're going to be comfortable. Now, there are some cases where, you know, people are just tripping balls and they're having way too bad of a trip and just freaking the fuck out. You know, like for example, because I've seen videos of those people who think they're like dying and they're like laying on the ground, just tweaking the fuck out and like literally like screaming and shit. I'm talking like really, really bad trip. In that instance, there's only really a few things you can do. And one of these things I never normally encourage, but in this instance, I'd give it a pass. You know, one thing is if you really have no options and you need to just get rid of a bad trip benzos will make you come down you know and i don't i don't encourage benzos i don't encourage i fucking hate xans for those of you guys who may be new to the channel maybe you found me through this video i fucking hate xanax normally as a recreational drug it sucks dick and i don't encourage it but for this purpose xanax can be really really helpful you know personally when i'm tripping i used to always keep some with me just in case you know and i I got pretty experienced with psychedelics. I tripped a lot. I had a lot of great times. I had some okay times. I never had a truly like terrible entire trip. I had stints of trips that were bad, but never entirely bad trips. And one thing I would always keep with me is Zans because whenever someone's tripping, they can really help. They can help them come down. You know, if the worst comes to the worst and you just need to get them off it, that can help really, really significantly. You know, it really can. But, you know, also at that point, Another thing you can do is you you have to remember to, you know, be really patient and kind of kind of talk to him really calmly, you know, talk to him like your like your dog almost like your puppy, you know, not not in that like shitty little voice, but like, you know how like whenever you're talking to like your dog, you're just like you're nice, you know, you're like not talking as fast, you know, you're just nice and slow and like patient and you know, your voice is like softer and all that shit. Do that with someone having a bad trip, you know, talk to them really nicely, ask them if they, you know, if they need anything, you know, if you could do anything for them, uh, you know, help them out, grab them a cup of water or some shit, you know, just kind of like, just kind of be, I don't know how to put it, just kind of like be there, be there for them at that point, I guess, because the, the thing is like very, very small gestures will make someone feel really, really good on acid. So for example, you know, when I'm tripping and like, let's say I'm at a restaurant, for example, I've been at Buffalo Wild Wings one time when I was tripping and you know, the the waitress came over and she was like, uh, have a great night. And I was like, oh, she's cool as fuck. I was like, oh, bet, dude, that's, that's nice. That bet, you know, like it's that kind of thing. It's just very, very small gestures go a very, very long way when someone's tripping, you know, even when they're having a bad trip. So if you're able to, you know, comfort them, make them feel better, then, you know, it could be okay. And that's if they're comfortable with having a person near them. You know, sometimes they don't want to be near anyone. They don't want to talk to anyone. And at that point, if they're really not willing to be near anyone, like if you come near them and they just freak the fuck out, then, 
you know, I, I mean, of course, if you've exhausted all your options, because just because someone freaks out when you come near them doesn't mean that you can't still help them, then benzos would be my recommendation at that point. But anyways, on to the second portion of this video, tripping alone. Now, when you're tripping alone and having a bad trip, it is a lot different and a lot more challenging to stop, you know, or to at least deal with so it's not as bad or it even turns into a good trip, you know? And the the one thing with this is, I mean, I don't recommend even tripping alone until you are seriously experienced with psychedelics. Because the thing is, you know, you, you can take a tab once or twice and think like, oh yeah, I know what's up. But acid is a weird drug, you know, with, with most drugs like cocaine and, you know, benzos, opiates, weed, whatever you want to call it, the experience is generally the same. The high is generally the same. You know, your tolerance may go up. You may have to take more, but you're ingesting the same drug. The experience is going to be the same. Psychedelics don't work like that. Psychedelics are not the same every time. You could take a tab one day and then take a tab four days later, and it would feel like an entirely different drug. Psychedelics are the only like category of drugs that are like this, you know. And I, this is from my experience. This isn't, uh, you know, some shit that like, oh, I heard from a friend. This is from my experience doing it. Every trip I had felt really different mentally, even though when you look at it, I was doing the same thing. You know, I was doing the same stuff, going to the same places, hanging out with the same people. Every trip was incredibly different, and I look back on them all as like super, super unique and you know different from one another. And that's the thing, you know, you, you have to really be experienced to trip alone. So I wanted to get that, you know, make that very clear and get that out of the way. But one thing that I personally think is really, really good when you're having a bad trip on your own is listen to calm ass music. I'm talking like really calm music, like listen to, you know, some slow, like even some like orchestra type shit or like violins and shit, just, just soft music, you know, like relaxed, laid back, no, no crazy hype EDM dubstep shit, none of that. Just listen to calm music, you know, maybe if you, if you have a computer, if you're on your computer, watch some like normal people videos, like watch like, watch like cat videos or like baby fails videos, just like very, very stupid, like you know, things that like a middle-aged mom would watch if she was at home, you know, and her, her son was at school and she had to pick him up in an hour, but, you know, she had like 35 minutes to blow until she had to leave the house, but she didn't quite have enough time to sew something new, so like she watched a baby video. Like, that's what you should do. Just watch like, go go on YouTube or go on any video site and just watch very, very calming videos, very, very relaxed, like very straight edge videos, you know, just very, very generic stuff. You know, the YouTube trending plays page, excuse me, can be like a, a super good place to find these kind of videos, you know, where you could just look up like cat video or something like that. Just watch something that is really, really like soothing, you know, some shit that you'd see on like America's funniest videos, you know, like just something that is, you know, very like family oriented. Cause when you see those kind of things, you know, like I mentioned before, acid's going to make you, you know, very, very susceptible to what you're seeing and very, very focused on the one thing that you're doing. So if you're just sitting there doing nothing, staring at the wall while you're having a bad trip, it's only going to get worse. If you're watching a video with like a cute little cat, it could help fix your trip or like, you know, a little baby in there or some shit. It, it could help your trip. You know, it could. Another thing that you can do, and this one is a little, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to put it. You know, it, it, it can be good or it can be bad is playing a video game, you know, playing a game. It, it can be good and bad because when you're playing a game when you're tripping, it completely engulfs you, you know, it completely sucks you in. Like you are really, really focused on that game because it's almost like you don't even realize that things are going on around you, you know, at least, and this is from my experience, but when I'm playing a game when I'm tripping, I'm really, really focused on it because not only do I have that kind of like acid tunnel vision, but there's so much going on. I have to focus on it and it's keeping me interested. Even if I'm sucking dick at the game, even if the game sucks ass to begin with, like if I was sober, I'd probably hate the game. But when I'm tripping, I'm really, really into it and really focused on it. And it takes my mind off of other things. You know, all I can think about is the game and like, you know, I'm having fun and what am I doing? Like, for example, I remember one time I was tripping and I played H1Z1 with a friend and that might not be the best game recommendation. You might just want to play like a platformer or some like calm game. But 
you know, anyways, I was playing H1 with a friend and I was like parachuting and I was looking around at all the stuff around me, like all the, you know, all the scenery. And I just like landed in a God awful spot and died. And it was amazing. I was like, I was laughing. I was having fun just cause I was looking around at the environment. I was like, Oh, what happened? Like, Oh shit. I'm fucking dead. Like, I don't even think I, I don't even think I hit an enemy with a weapon that night, but I played for like two and a half hours with a buddy of mine and we were just dicking around. It was, it was fun as fuck, you know? And when you've got, you know, a good game to play, just to kick it, chill out, you know, it, it can, it can help take your mind off it. Now, one thing that I wouldn't necessarily recommend is shows like Netflix and, you know, any, any TV shows for the most part, because from my experience, I don't, I don't know what it is. Like I can't really give a specific reason, but Shows don't really help my trip, and nor can I really stay focused on them. Like, they're the one thing where, like, I just can't stay focused on them. Because here's the thing. When you're playing games, you know, you're you're sitting probably closer to the screen. You're probably focused in on it. You know, you're really looking. You're really into it. You know, it's got you involved. You have to do something to do that. You know, that's the thing. That's the key to taking your mind off of a bad trip. You have to be doing something. But when you're watching a show you're not doing anything. You're just sitting there and staring and listening. So you could sit and stare and listen at anything going on around you. There's a loud bang outside of your house. You're going to go stare at that and not the TV. When you're playing a game, if there's like a loud bang outside of your house, chances are you're not going to care because you're tripping balls and this game's got you fucking interested. You're, you're playing the shit out of this game, you know? So, you know, play some games, chill out, watch some like baby videos, cat videos, those kind of things. Those can really help. Maybe even like FaceTime a friend, you know, FaceTime a friend, call somebody, talk to somebody, you know, talking to people can be, can be very good, you know, and also don't play games that are competitive. Like, and by that, I mean, don't play the competitive mode of games. For example, if any of you guys have played League of Legends, don't play ranked when you're tripping because you're going to tilt. You're going to be mad and it's going to upset you. Or you're just not going to tilt and feed all game and then be mad the next day. You know, either way, don't play games that are super competitive or have like a ranked system. You know, play play like the casual modes. You know, play the, the laid back stuff where you, you don't care. You know, your teammates won't care and you don't care because... If your teammates are baking you for being bad in the competitive mode because you're tripping balls, it could upset you, you know, it could make you feel like shit. So just chill out, play some games, you know, watch some YouTube videos. For those of you guys who don't play video games, honestly, I would say just watch some calm YouTube videos, you know, take some deep breaths, just chill out, you know, try to enjoy yourself. You know, another thing is I always found that, you know, just vaping is really, really soothing when you're tripping. I mean, even zero nicotine can just be really, really soothing because you're just sitting there watching the smoke, you know, slowly, slowly come out. You can blow it out real slow, do some cool tricks with it, blow an O and just blow your fucking mind. Like you just see that and be like, why is that in the shape of an O? Like, holy shit. You know, like you just, just very, very like basic calming things are, are what you can do. And of course, if it really gets out of hand, you can always have your benzos on deck, but that's the only time I'd ever recommend benzos. So either way, that's just a few tips for me on how to help stop a bad trip. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a like if you did. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.